just look at that that is the bmw r1250 gs adventure bike oh my goodness Hello, welcome to Revelator Alpha. Hope you're enjoying the channel and the series of videos. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Check out the website, revelatoralf.com. Look, this is the BMW GS R1250. Um, it's got the boxer engine uh, horizontally opposed. It's got electronic suspension. It's got everything that you'd want on a bike. Dual link brakes. 70-30 split. Spoke wheels. 19-inch front. 17-inch rear. It's got a quick shifter on it as well, as standard. LED lights up to yin yang. It <laughs> looks amazing. Now, uh, one of the reasons, and obviously shaft drive and all that kind of good stuff, which is really important, I think, if you're going to try and have a maintenance free, hassle free existence. Um, BMW said, hey, Alf, look, you're looking at Taurus. How about riding this? And I thought, Do you know what? Yeah, let's give it a go. What I like about these big adventure bikes is. I don't like them necessarily for serious off-road, but some off-road capability, some hard compact trails, some tracks, some dirt tracks, fine. But it's the touring capability that I really like. Put big boxes on there, upright riding position, and you wait until I turn this on here. This TFT screen is to die for. It's got ABS, traction control, different mode, electronic suspension. Uh, it's got heated grips as standard. Cruise control, it's got the lot. Do you know what? Enough dilly-dallying. Let's just get on it and ride the thing. Look at this. Start it up. <laughs> it's like you're watching a movie. It's horrible weather out here. It's in rain mode as well. So you've got different modes. Uh, if I just press the mode button here. So I've got rain, road, dynamic, enduro. Leave it on rain. It's got, to say, traction control and all that kind of stuff. Right, let me just uh, pull in the clutch. Start it. Oh, lovely. It's got a lovely little throw of the engine as you um, as you rev it up. That's some that standard uh, boxer uh, engine uh, characteristics. Right, let's go give this a go, shall we? As I say, apologies for the video quality because it's just horrible weather. But that's the way it goes. Right. Now, I'm six foot and change, and, you know, I can just uh, put my feet on the floor, flat-footed, I should say. So it is really for a taller rider, I would say. Pickup on this is absolutely amazing. Really nice. Really smooth. Quick shifter. Oh, just, <laughs> just, not, not even, and then down gears as well. Just shifting it with my foot. Lovely, lovely. No clutch engagement at all. Absolutely lovely lovely in the bends i tell you what it is really well balanced here you would think for such a big bike it'll be all over the place but no it isn't look typical germans you know engineering wise they're on point they are brilliant i love this tft screen i rode the mutaguzzi uh, uh v85 tt and I was waxing lyrical about their TFT screen. This is just as good. It's lovely, it's clear, it's bright, beautiful. As I say, all electronic suspension, you just get on it and it automatically adjusts to you. You know, it's selectable ABS, selectable traction control. It's got all the different modes. It is peeing down with rain here, but it feels solid as a rock. Love it. I say you're just going into a bend now and you just a bit of counter steer and it just rolls there isn't any over rotation here that it's just beautiful you put it into a bend you put it at a lean angle and it stays there well done bmw oh yes when i first rode these many years ago i was like yeah they're all right but now with the advances that they've got these are really good if you're looking for a tourer if you're looking for an upright riding position that's got a bit of off-road capability you know that you're not you're not going to be damaging things if you take it on a trail or a track or something like that as long as it's hard and compact and you're not it's not too challenging this will be absolutely fine lovely brakes 70 30 do you know what these are probably the best brakes that i've uh had on a bike in a while dual link brakes go independent as well 
they, they are just so good they are really good I'd say it's peeing it down right now but I got to say this bike is just really nice you never feel as if it's uh, getting away from you you never feel as if it's loose and this is really good I mean, it's, you know and other adventure bikes that I've ridden that have been this big and this top heavy and you think do you know what mm, yeah I'm not so sure but this you don't feel it and I've got to say I'm not even necessarily a big BMW fan I just you know I call it as I see it and it's a great bike this is the kind of bike that you can sit on all day and you'd be absolutely fine this is like got the 30 litre tank on it which is good for what 350 odd miles range or something the other GS is another variant which has a 20 something uh, litre tank a little bit smaller but look if you want long distance nice heated grips on here <laughs> oh my god it the weather is rubbish so, as i say i do apologize for the for the video quality but look if you want to have a bike that will go in all weathers go anywhere within reason great for the tour and i think you know what with this screen i'm not getting buffeted at all and the rain is coming uh, staying off me quite a lot I mean, look, it is horrible. <laughs> well, it's horrible, but the bike is superb. The bike is superb. Well done, BMW. I think I've said that twice, but you know they deserve it. They deserve it with this bike. What a great, what a great, great bike. Really good. Right, let's come off here. Let's see what else we can do. Some of these adventure bikes with a seat in position, they do tend to throw you forward a little bit. They do tend to, but this one isn't. It isn't like that at all. And, and actually most of the big adventure bikes are really comfortable. I mean, they are designed for you to sit in the saddle all day. They, when they talk about adventure bikes, you know, yes, they all love to have the, the photo shoots with the, with the bike, you know, going off road and jumping off rocks and all that kind of stuff. But let's face it, most people most people are never going to use that bike to any of its capability and most people are going to be too scared to take like a 15 20 000 pound bike with all the extras of course and all that kind of stuff they're not that expensive but you can pick these up second hand previous incarnations 12 13 000 with only two or three thousand miles on it and you'll have a fantastic bike but most people aren't going to ride them to, you know, that kind of capability. And they're not going to risk it either. But what they will do is actually say, right, I want to use this for a tour. I want to use this for a comfortable ride, a long commute, let's say. Uh, you know, I want something where I can put my partner or my son or my daughter on the back here. And I want something that's, uh, you know, going to be really smooth and uh, really functional. This is it. I think people get into this this mindset that these big adventure bikes they're one dimensional in fact they're not they're multi-dimensional you can use them in so many different ways and the styling has got better is that utility style which i really like by the way but they've just got better suspension going over these speed runs is really good no dramas at all but what they're not very good at is doing the serious off-road but they're not designed for that they're designed for tracks and trails where you're never having to put your feet down it's not too slippery it's not too sandy it's not too deep you're not going through rutted stuff because you know you don't want the bike that's really top heavy and big and bulky you want something that's really light you know 250 enduro something like that but big adventure bikes will get you those long distances in between so you sacrifice one to gain on the other and that's the same with any bike isn't it you sacrifice a little bit here to gain on the other but in terms of this big adventure bike whilst the market might be changing a little bit to slightly smaller adventure bikes you know the 800s or whatever 700s 800s 900s there's there's nothing here that i can say wow this is a a, a bad bike nothing brakes are just superb absolutely superb now whilst i feel as if i'm encased 
uh, you know, in this thing. You know, I'm sort of surrounded by a massive tank here, massive engine, boxer engine, a 1250 engine. It it feels really smooth there is a little bit of a, a throw definitely when you're when you're at low revs and you want to go higher but this quick chain quick shifter is really nice but when you engage the clutch it is really nice really smooth it's just really nice to be on a bike that is just so smooth handles right feels planted but it is a massive bike it is a massive bike so you've got to be of a certain size i would say and you've got to be of a certain stature let's say to i would say feel really comfortable on this bike otherwise i think you're it's just too big and cumbersome you know especially when you load it up with big boxes and you got a you know pillion on the back of there as well you know you could easily be overwhelmed by this bike not by the power the power delivery is really nice really smooth uh, but you know by its uh, just by its size and weight but it's nice <laughs> it's so nice as i say everybody never make a video in the rain well there we go this was just an opportunity i could not turn uh, turn away as I say, this screen is bright as you like. All weather conditions, really clear. Those older TFT screens are just don't cut the mustard anymore. So many times you're in bright sunlight or in the dark and they're just, they're rubbish, aren't they? But this, look, bright as you like. Lovely. I've got to say, these heated grips are a bit on the warm side. They really are hot. My goodness. Let me turn those off. Well, look, if you, if you pick this up, all I can say is that this bike does the business these dual lick brakes work really well uh, I've no idea if this video is going to come out or not with the sound because it's just teaming it down I honestly don't think it will work but there we go uh, but look brilliant bike brilliant ride it was ju it's just been awesome absolutely awesome uh, you know you put this on on a highway look and it's absolutely fine duck down a little bit you're not going to feel any wind whatsoever oh yeah manual control here which is really nice on the windscreen manual control there my only problem with it, when the bikes get too electronic you always have that fear that they're going to break right in the most inopportune moments so if you want to go on the grand tour or if you're stuck on a trail somewhere and then it all starts going peak tong with the electrics and you think oh really i just want manual control but no this this works this works really well so the verdict really is uh highway speed back roads even some non-challenging trails and tracks this would be absolutely fine it is a big bulky bike not heavy uh in terms of the way you feed it on the ride on the bike but you know there will be some limitations there depends on your size and your stature how you're going to be able to handle it but i would say this bike is very capable lovely bike to ride lovely and smooth all the mod cons on it that you really want abs traction control different uh, riding modes and all that kind of stuff in this rain mode and you can see what the weather's been like it's been absolutely fine lovely still great power but very very manageable very smooth very nice if you're looking for a big bike all-round capability and a tourer the reason why you wouldn't want this bike is purely going to be based upon the looks rather than the the way it performs it's either going to be your kind of thing or it isn't but in terms of the way it performs brilliant absolutely brilliant if you want it for those longer distances if you want it for the tour if you want it for you know go and have a bit of fun every now and again on some non-challenging uh, green lanes let's say absolutely fine but my experience of big adventure bikes on any kind of challenging uh, terrain any kind of challenging green lanes to dirt trails when you get into the ruts that kind of thing they're just too big and bulky too big and bulky for that kind of stuff and anything beyond that yeah because they're not designed for it let's face it let's not be too critical of a bike that isn't really designed to do that kind of stuff but anyway look it's, it's so nice so nice to ride really rolls well into the bands beautiful i'm just going to go up the hill here and i'm going to take this back to the dealership effortless effortless it really holds the bend it doesn't overall as i said before you just put it in a neat lean angle 
and it just holds it I'm trying to avoid these these manhole covers as I go around typical right on a bend perfect very very nice well there we go look as I say, I think I've uh, had my fit of this bike. Absolutely great. So I am kind of looking at this Tourer range, this big, whether I go for a back to a big adventure bike, uh, that kind of thing. I don't know yet. I don't know. Uh, but it, it, we'll have to wait and see. But certainly it's a much smaller bike for serious off-roading or even challenging off-road to have a bit of fun. But if you want some good road touring and some off-road capability, let's say, I don't think you can go far wrong with this bike and we know what the pedigree is of these right now and they are great bikes so you know that's what it, that's that's where we're at ladies and gentlemen that's where we're at right anyway so there's a couple more videos coming right at the end of this one so uh check those out but anyway hope you found this useful this is the new brand new bmw 1250gs oh it's uh oh yes oh yes very very nice indeed very very nice indeed lovely balance lovely bike to ride really comfortable tft screen is great tech on it is fantastic why wouldn't you want one why wouldn't you want one catch you on the next video whenever that is ta-da